Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Wednesday, your hump day, <laughs> April 1st, 2020. So welcome to April, everybody. Um, I have a serious question. Has anyone paid their rent? <laughs> It's funny because most of us can't. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so, and you know what's so crazy? I was thinking about it today. Um, I was like, wow, wait a second. It's April, which means it's probably spring by now. You guys, in all of the madness, in all of like the, the tomfoolery, the craziness that's been going on, I mean, we completely f missed the spring equinox. I don't know. But, well, wait, let me let me not speak for everybody. I missed the equinox. Uh, it's a f it's spring, y'all. And it's been spring. The equinox was on the 19th. Like, damn, we totally missed the beginning of spring. But whatever. It's spring now. Winter is officially over. I mean, I guess that's a good thing, right? I mean, it doesn't really matter anyway. We're all cooped up in our homes just because of this whole pandemic what Ugh. anyway welcome to april welcome to spring um and welcome to morning coffee yeah so no if you are if you are wondering if you missed the live stream don't worry you have not i decided to not go live today um just so that i could have a little more conscious focus to focus on the message with uh, someone did mention actually that you know they love morning coffee, but doing it live is actually kind of distracting. And I really kind of agree with that. I don't think I want to completely um, do away with the live thing. I may do it every once in a while, but also I'm probably not going to go live all the time just so that I can make sure that I can focus on the message at certain times. Today would be one of those days. Yes? All right, kids. So happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Happy spring. <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm kind of upset about that. I can't believe I missed the equinox, but it's okay, whatever. Let's just, let's just get into the message for today and see what spirit wants to discuss with us. Yes, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. Alrighty, kids, so I'm going to start with the Energy Oracle deck um, just to get our overall theme, the overall message for today. And then we'll move forward from there, yeah? So, guidance for today, please, Spirit. Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. What is it that you would like to discuss with us today? Okay. Excellent. They say stop there. So let's see. What's our theme for today? What's the central message for today? What do you want to discuss with us, please, Spirit? Wednesday, April 1st. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Very interesting. We have the temple path again. And this time it's coming out with strategy. And we have the Angel of Strength at the bottom of the deck. Very interesting, guys, because this came out Monday, I believe it was. Um, also, you know what? I didn't even do my spiel. So keep in mind the time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for the 1st of April, it doesn't mean it absolutely has to resonate with you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This isn't necessarily going to resonate for everyone, but even if it doesn't resonate for you, hang out, stick around a little bit. You might learn something. You might, something might help you. You know what I mean? Okay, excellent. So we have 
the temple path, and we have strategy. And if you look, these two cards are number wise are mirror images of each other. That's kind of cool. Um, but the temple path is definitely speaking to your own path, your own path to spirit, um, your spiritual journey. And you have strategy here. And it's interesting, interesting because what we were talking about um, on Monday with that meeting that was titled Off the Beaten Path, we were talking about being an individual in your, basically an individual in your own spiritual, ooh, uprising, we'll say. Um, and with the overall energy of the angel of strength here this is giving me a feeling of like being strong enough to walk your own path being strong enough to make your own decisions for your own journey and being strong enough to be that independent individual that walks their own path that isn't afraid to do it their way that isn't afraid to shine their light in ways that others haven't seen before Again, just to, to be on a spiritual path, you don't have to, it doesn't have to look like anyone else's. You don't have to follow the, a book, a Bible, a, um, a, 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 an already developed way, an already developed path. And, and, and there's not to say that there's anything wrong with that. However, with, with, with following something, with like, like following the Bible or, or following the Torah or following, um, you know, the Bhagavad Gita, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But also there's nothing wrong with coming up with your own strategy, with your own plan of action. Okay. Interesting, because now the other thing that I'm getting with this that's different from that message that had come out on Monday is that there is actually a method to all of this madness. Um, everything that we're experiencing right now is directly related to the spiritual <laughs> uprising of the planet. That's kind of funny. Um, yeah. And so because of that, Spirit is kind of saying to us, you know, hold on, be strong, okay, because this is definitely necessary. And through this journey, wow, of walking away from the past, hello, there it is right there, walking away from the past, leaving the old paradigm behind, through this journey, there is in fact blossoming abundance that's coming through with this. You just can't see it yet. But let me tell you, y'all, there is a method to the madness strategy, okay? Beautiful. Let's get into some clarification here. I'm gonna to move to the tarot, and I wanna talk about strategy. Whoops. The individualism, individuality, authenticity, it's like spirit is asking us to really start shining our light in ways that we haven't allowed ourselves to before. And I'm seeing as we do that, we all come together and create this new glow, this beautiful new glow that has never really existed on the planet. But in order to do that, you do have to strategize and you do have to kind of like go within and figure out who you are or figure out what resonates for you first. Um, it w I mean, you could flounder around for a little bit if you wanted and just like, you know, shoot in the dark if you wanted to, but it would be much more effective if we were to go within and find our inner source of spirituality and let that spiritual energy reign free is what spirit is saying. All right, last shuffle, and then I want to look at strategy. Why is, okay, why is strategy here, please, spirit? What is strategy for the collective? The Empress. Okay. Ha! Huh. With the Five of Swords at the bottom of the deck so far. I'm going to go a little further, but uh, so far what I'm getting with this, the Empress is here to say that all religions, all ways of life are welcome. All, all spiritual practices. There is no one way to do anything. There never has been one way to do anything. And the Empress is that type of energy, that nurturing, caring, loving, unconditionally loving energy that 
willingly encourages her children, her subjects, her family, her friends, those she watches over. She lovingly and willingly encourages them to be 100% fully themselves and to hold nothing back. And yet, with the Five of Swords underneath the deck, it's like we're all competing against each other saying that this way is better or that way is better when no way is better than the other. They're just a way. <laughs> you know? Let's, let's, go, let's go a little deeper here with the Empress energy and strategy. Okay. The star to the Ace of Pentacles with, ooh, the world at the bottom of the deck. Excellent. So, um, all right. So this is a, this is a strong time of abundance, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and Spirit is saying, the Spirit is asking you to get very clear on what it is that you want. Or, or if you can't, if, because this star, this star energy is a very non, unknown type of energy, right? Okay. It's 1111. It's a, it's a, it's an energy of following faith, taking a leap of faith, following something, you know, that you feel is right to, to follow, but you don't exactly know where it's taking you. So even if you don't know exactly how to express this, this, spiritual the spirituality and even if you don't exactly i mean i'm also getting a vibe of just like creativity and fun and expression it doesn't have to be um, a spiritual path it doesn't have to be some some super devout uh, uh super spiritual religious looking type of thing i mean the strongest thing that i'm getting here outside of like spiritualism but which in reality really is a form of spiritualism anyway, is just creative expression. Allowing the inspiration of your soul to just pour out of you and shine brightly. You don't exactly know where it's going to take you. You don't exactly need, maybe you don't even really know how to express that creativity or that, or, or that part of yourself, but ultimately you have the opportunity to do so right here, right now, Ace of Pentacles with the Empress even okay the empress represents that that creativity that that abundance the 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 gestation and all that and all that beautiful stuff right i mean how many times are we how many different times are we going to say this we have this opportunity right now to start something new to go off the beaten path to do what we choose to do right since <laughs> since the world is coming to an end i mean <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding, but at the same time, I mean, the world is here. This is a closing of a major overarching cycle. It's time for us to restart. It's time for us to start anew. It's time to, for us to start being the individuals that we have always been, we've always wanted to be, but we've never had the opportunity, never given the chance, never, uh, never allowed ourselves to, never even allowed ourselves to take the chance to do so, right? Let's get a little bit more on this. I want to talk about this Ace of Pentacles a little bit more. Why is this Ace of Pentacles here? What else can you tell us about the Ace of Pentacles, please, Spirit? The Six of Cups. Oh my goodness, with the Knight of Wands. Yeah, see, look, the Six of Cups is talking about the past. It's talking about nostalgia. It's talking about, um, yes, okay. Uh, well, I was going to say the balance of give and take, but ultimately this is... That's more of a Six of Pentacles energy, but that's kind of what I'm getting, I'm picking up on too. There's there's a level of reciprocity that's, that's coming forward with uh, this Temple Path energy. Whatever it is your soul is really calling you towards. I feel like there's someone, there are a number of people out there where your soul is calling you towards a certain project, a certain endeavor. Um, and it's something from your past. It's something that you've always wanted to do. It, I don't know why I'm getting art specifically, but it could be an art project, um, painting, picking up or, or, or painting again, or illustrating again, drawing again, um, something that bring you something I'm hearing, something that brought you joy in the past and great fulfillment. But as you aged or as you grew up, you know, that fulfillment fell away because you weren't necessarily allowed to do it any longer, whether it was there were people around you that kind of stopped you from doing it, whether it was your career, your professional life, or just adulting kind of killed that bug or at least buried that bug 
within. And so now you're getting a chance to explore it again with the Knight of Wands. You're being reactivated here. Okay, I want to go to the spiritual, uh, the, the temple path next, but I really, I really do want to reiterate that um, this, first of all, this energy that I'm picking up on is very strongly creative in nature, um, expressive as well. Um, but, and it, this literally could just be being an illustrator, being a singer, a dancer, something like that. That could be your spiritual practice. Spiritual practice doesn't have to be anything other than that. Spiritual practice is honoring the spirit within, honoring God's source, creator of the universe within, and expressing yourself through that. Okay? Okay, so let's talk about the temple path here then. Why is temple path here, please, spirit? What else can you tell us about this temple path energy? Three of cups, eight of pentacles, yeah. Overall energy is the Ten of Pentacles. Wow. Okay. Um, wow. So the Ten of Pentacles in this situation is referring to the end of a, or closing of a cycle here. Okay. The end of um, world, I'm hearing the end of world dominance, the end of dominance or the, 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 the dominance of the material. I mean, we're in the material realm. So like, okay, but like the overemphasis is what spirit is saying on the material. All right. That cycle is in fact coming to a close and we have this situation now or we have this in, uh, environment now where soul family or people that would connect or bond on a soul family level with, is connecting people are connecting in this way and for some of you this isn't just like physically physical people connecting in this way but it's also spiritually so this is your your ancestors your guides and all that coming together and working together to build something new. Eight of Pentacles with the Three of Cups. There's a lot of teamwork going on there. But what else can you tell us about this, please, Spirit? Oh, wow, the sun. And I just I just get this feeling of all of us just kind of with the Queen of Cups here. Excellent. Okay, so I just get this feeling that all of us, or this feeling of all of us coming together and doing what we like to do, having fun. There's such, there is such a, a feeling of joy and um, uh, togetherness. Crafting, getting back to the ancient crafts, maybe, you know, alchemy and all that good stuff. Very nice. Very, very nice. Creativity is your spirituality. That's what I'm hearing. Someone has been struggling with that. Struggling with understanding that you don't have to follow any sort of book or beaten path or, or already laid out circumstance. Creativity is your spirituality with this Queen of Cups energy. Ooh, and the Ten of Cups underneath that and the Ace of Cups underneath that. Good Lord, y'all. Creativity is, in fact, your spirituality. It's where you joy find joy. It's where you ha find happiness. It's where you find peace. There's no reason why you shouldn't practice that. And it could very well be that this time period right now is allowing you to... Re it, I, I just heard reset button. It's allowing you to push the reset button and get back to this. Get back to the joy in life. Get back to finding meaning in the little things instead of le letting them just pass you by. Beautiful. Okay, so we have the Angel of Strength here at the bottom of the deck. All right, and I kind of want to get some messages for from the Oracle of the Angels here in relation to that. So with the Angel of Strength here, Angels, what exactly is it specifically, what guidance do you have? for us. I, I really feel like this is definitely a continuation of Monday's reading. Even though I took a pause yesterday, you know, but today, today is April 1st. And it's, it's, we're starting a new month. Um, we're starting a new phase, really. Mm-hmm. 
it's almost as if with the angel of strength here spirit is kind of saying to you you have the chance to start over if you allow yourself to if you want to yeah but with this angel of strength spirit what uh, specific messages do you have for us from the angel of strength you're never alone this card comes out a lot from this deck but you but that's a that's a steady reminder that spirit always wants us to know we're not alone we're never alone even when we're quarantined by ourselves in our rooms or in our homes in our apartments our houses and we think we're by ourselves we're not spirit is always with us helping us guiding us encouraging us okay let's get one more here light mm. there's a lot of creativity in the light there's a there's a lot of beautiful new adventures to be had in the light and the light is a spectrum of color think about white light white light is a combination of all the colors right there's no one way to the light there's no one way towards spirit there is no one way towards god source creator how whomever however you resonate with it there is not just one way there are many there are as many different ways as there are people Okay, I want to get back into the tarot a little bit, and I want to talk about light. Let's talk about light here. What messages do you have for us, Spirit, in terms of light? What is it that we are needing to understand at this moment about the light? Let me give this one more shuffle. Okay, light. What do you want to say about light here? Well, look at that. We have the fool. Take a leap of faith. Move it in a new direction. Jump off that beaten path and try something new. Light encourages you to, encourages you to do so. We have, wow, the page of swords with the knight of swords. <laughs> wow, there's the empress again. Hmm. And the six of wands at the bottom of the deck. That's beautiful. But you see, the light is all-encompassing, just like the Empress is. Interestingly enough, we have the Page of Swords with the Knight of Swords. The Page of Swords, I was getting an energy of allow yourself to be inquisitive. Allow yourself to, to find the wonder in life again. Allow, allow yourself to learn. And with the Knight of Swords, I'm actually getting an energy of like fighting for the light, which is interesting. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to you know promote any violence here, but at the same time, it's like... Be assertive. I'm almost hearing aggressive. Be aggressive in a sense. Take that with a grain of salt. But when it comes to your own spiritual practice, when it comes to your own sense of self, when it comes to your ability to express yourself in the ways that you feel are right for you, you have every right to fight for this. I want to go a little bit deeper here. Um, I want to talk about the Knight of Swords specifically. Why is the Knight of Swords here, Spirit? Well, what else do you want to say about the Knight of Swords? Yeah. The Magician. I mean, ooh, 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 with the Five of Pentacles and Judgment. There you go. See? Okay. That's exactly, yeah. Nine of Wands is at the bottom of the deck. Battered, bruised, um... This, the wounded warrior, someone that has, I mean, I mean, okay, this is, this is getting to be a pretty specific message here, but I'm going to, but hey, take it as it resonates, y'all, right? So this is actually exactly what I was picking up on with the Knight of Swords. There is an energy of like fighting for your, we're going to fight for our right, not to party, but to follow our own spiritual paths. So yeah, actually let's fight for our right to party too. You know what I'm <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because walking down this spiritual path doesn't have to be 
mundane. It can, in fact, be a party. Spirit encourages it to be a party, especially with this Three of Cups energy that's down here, right? Because this is a very fun-loving, jovial, party-type energy, okay? All work does, all of this spiritual work doesn't have to be all work all the time. It can be fun. But anyway, in relation to the Knight of Swords, judgment is, an, is a wake-up call, is a, is a call towards something new, is a resurrection, is a new opportunity, um, is an end of a cycle in the beginning. Well, really, I would say it's more, I would say the judgment card, which does come right before the world card in the Major Arcana, but the judgment card would kind of be like the Maybe it's just this situation. I'm seeing this as more uh, of a, like the start of a party. You know, you, we're, we're kicking it off. We're saying, okay, it's time to go. The doors are open. Everybody um, come on in. You know, let's, let's, start, let's start moving and shaking, right? But the, 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 the judgment here is the wake up call for you to start manifesting exactly what it is that you want and not allowing yourself to be left out in the cold or feel like you're inadequate or feel like you're less than, or feel like you, you don't know enough, or you don't have enough, or you don't even have that connection to spirit within, that you need someone external to you, some sort of priest or rabbi or something, to establish this connection for you with God, source, creator, when in reality, you are never apart from God, source, creator. You are a piece of God, source, creator embodied in the flesh, okay? You don't need anyone else to validate your connection with the universe. So it's time to get moving, start moving and shaking. But, but I mean, uh, uh, sure, in some cases, uh, I guess, because the message, this is the message, I'm just going to give it as I'm hearing it, as I'm perceiving it, but the message for someone is to aggressively assert the fact that you can manifest your connection to God, source, creator, universe, however you want. Whatever resonates for you, this is definitely a continuation of um, Monday's message. Okay. Let's go a little... I'm really wanting to go deeper on that. Let's keep going. I just feel like there's more, so I'm going to pull more tarot and see what we get. Okay, here we go. What else do you want to say about this, please, Spirit? Ace of Wands. I mean, damn, y'all. Someone really is inspired here. We have Temperance at the bottom of the deck. With the Three of Cups underneath that, too. Someone is really inspired here. Alright, so let's talk about this Ace of Wands. Ten of Swords. Eight of Wands in reverse. Two of Swords upright. Nine of Wands again. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So check it out. Um, okay, here's where. Okay, here's where it's getting a little bit tricky. You have the Ace of Wands. So and and, and also that is accompanied by judgment here. Okay, so someone is feeling called to move in a new direction spiritually. Also, keep in mind that your cre what I was saying earlier, your creative expression is very much a spiritual practice. It doesn't have to get any more complicated than that. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to set up a huge, this elaborate altar. I mean, you don't have, if you want to do those things, by all means, please go ahead and do so. No one is judging you here. No one is saying that that is wrong. But what we are saying is that is not absolutely necessary. Your spiritual path, your spiritual practice is your own. And I'm feeling like someone is getting the, the, the call the wake up call or at least the alarm is going off it's like okay it's time to get started let's start you know let's start I, I, or at least you're just feeling you're just feeling like <laughs> your spirit not your biological clock but your spiritual clock is ticking right so it's like you're like ready to go i want to i want to express some uh, 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 try something new explore new avenues explore new ways of being and blah, blah blah okay great do that but ten of swords two of swords and the eight of wands in reverse so Here's the thing about it, though. You're reaching this level of inspiration here. You're hearing this wake-up call here because there are circumstances and situations from your past or your life that are, have come to a close. And yet, you are not taking the opportunity or someone is not taking the opportunity here to 
move forward. Eight of Wands is in reverse with the Two of Swords. There is a bit of denial here. What I'm getting is fear and a bit of stubbornness. It's like, well, you want to, to, to step out on your own, take a leap of faith, go off the beaten path, and yet you're still letting the past circumstances get you down. And I get what I'm getting with this is not, it, it's more of there's a refusal. I mean, there is a little bit of a refusal. Oops. There is a little bit of refusal here, but it's more because you can't see the way ahead of you. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You don't know where it's going to lead you. And I think, I feel like there's some, there's some um, conditioning in the back of your head playing. It's like, especially if we're talking about like spirituality, uh, and if you're coming from like a really religious or staunch upbringing, I'm feeling like there's an energy of someone is afraid to move forward on their own path because they don't want to be led astray and get caught up with the devil and the demons and all the death and destruction and darkness and blah 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 and that's really just not the case here those are to be quite honest those are fairy tales or what i kind of it's kind of what i want to say about it at least that's the message spirit is giving me in terms of it um and you need to just let yourself be free i mean there are going to be moments in anybody's life there's going to be ups and downs there's going to be challenges there are going to be bumps in the road there are going to there's going to be mistakes there's going to be destruction there's going to be rebirth and all that you'd have to just you can't have the light without the dark you can't have the dark without the light you can't have good with bad without the bad all that kind of stuff you just have to kind of take it all and roll with it that is another expression of spirituality and under and another understanding the darkness is never going to eradicate the light and the the light isn't really trying to eradicate the darkness because it's all a balanced situation darkness serves the light why? Because it helps us learn. It helps us find more of the light within ourselves. It helps us find more of the light within others. That's a pretty advanced topic, but okay. Okay. I want to talk about final last, before I move on to the Oracle section, I want to talk about this eight of wands in reverse with the two of swords here. What advice can we give in terms of this spirit? Wow. Oh my god, I love it. We have the Three of Cups at the bottom of the deck again. Okay, the Three of Cups is making yet another... Sorry, my mic is doing weird things today. Okay, anyway, the Three of Cups is making yet another appearance here. This is people coming together in celebration in tune with their individuality and not letting any sort of patriarchal or societal or controlling established energy to tell them who to be. I mean, we've learned from this. The, the Hierophant is, can be a positive energy, okay? The Hierophant is ultimately, regardless of all the other specificity, specificities, the Hierophant represents teaching and learning. Well, we've learned enough. It's time to go on our own path. It's time to bring justice into our lives and come together with ourselves find this balance, this harmony, this union, this, this connection with ourselves, which is going to allow us to find more of a connection with others. But first we have to walk away in order to keep our own, in, in, in the name of our own sense of balance and our own individual sense of balance and harmony and union. Yes? Beautiful. Okay, Oracle section. We're going to go with the light worker today. Okie dokie. So, light, oops, light worker oracle. What oracle message do we have for the collective today to close out this reading? One more shuffle. Okie dokie. Closing message, please, Spirit, for today, Wednesday, April. Ooh, card number 18. Ascension, the Rainbow Bridge. Ooh. 
Isn't this a beautiful card? I love this. You have been growing spiritually and your consciousness is expanding. It is transforming your experience of the material world from something you must control or conquer into a living expression of the radiant divine. As your appreciation and love for the material world becomes more unconditional, so too does the light that can flow into your aura, chakras, and physical body. As you physically expand, you may need more rest, healing, and meditation than usual to integrate this increasing degree of light and the consciousness it awakens within you. The Rainbow Bridge is a term for the channel of light that moves through your chakra system and along your spine, allowing spirit to enter your body and stimulate and the development of your soul. This bridge comes to life as your consciousness is raised. It draws in higher energies that nourish and awaken your body, mind, and soul through your chakra system. As your chakras become stimulated by the increase, increasing influx of spiritual light, a clearing process begins which supports the consequent expansion of your consciousness. This clearing is like a spiritual detoxification. It clears blocks from your mind, emotional body, and physical body, as well as from your soul, such as unresolved past life issues. As these blocks are broken down and processed, emotional trauma stored in your organs and nervous system can be released, and your energy field becomes more spacious. This creates room for an increase of spiritual light. As a result, you feel clearer about who you are and why you are here, and others see more clearly when they are in your field. You become more powerful. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to read the rest of this card. Your energy field continues to clear itself, attracting more spiritual light, becoming more visible beyond physical limits. Others can be supported by your light, even if they cannot see your physical body. You are growing as a light worker and helping humanity in increasing ways whilst enjoying your own spiritual growth. You are opening to new consciousness now. With this, con with this comes new insight, awareness, and an awakening or deepening of your soul talents such as healing, clairvoyance, channeling, or telepathy. Your channels are being cleared and activated. Rest. Open up and allow. Be patient and trust in your process. If emotional content arises and you are concerned you might be falling back into old habits, do not be afraid. Find ways to express what you are feeling through what? Writing, therapy, dance, music, and art, sound, and conscious movement. Look at that, y'all. Mm. Explore your personal expression to allow for spiritual expansion. Mm. This oracle brings an additional message from spirit. Hold on. Ascension can be a wild ride. Anything is possible. The past is not an indicator. The future is not set. This is a moment to cultivate your deepest feelings of spiritual love and peace. Simply allow the genius of life to flow through you in whatever way it chooses. During ascension, your life can change quite dramatically. The rainbow bridge empowers us to rise from one reality into another. Even if your outer world doesn't change radically, internally you will feel as though you are living a different life. Eventually, the physical world changes will follow. Enjoy crossing the rainbow bridge into new consciousness, dear one. You have everything you need. You are ready for this. It is meant to be. Well, there you have it, kids. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fan fantastic day and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning yeah take care Mwah! bye